So uh, I like throwing some curveballs at the beginning of an interview when I have a few extra minutes for for both of you. That's terrifying, it's, right? It, yeah. This is it's easy. Oh, I feel so unsettled. Right. <laughs> um, if someone has never seen anything that you've done in the past, what's the first thing that you want them watching, and why? Oh, that's a good um, question. That's a great question. I feel relieved that that's the question. First of all, but um. So actually, okay. So my the the thing that I'd love them to watch because it was the most fun I've ever had is Burning Love with Ken with Ken Marino who directed it and his wife Erica Oyama wrote it, and it you know was just the most fun I've ever had. And it was all improvised and kind of run and gun. And um, I love 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 the character I played, Julie Gristle White, and it's just an insanely good time. Hmm. Love that. I'd, I'd say, I don't know. I mean, it's, it depends on who's walking up to me, but, but I'd say like saving <laughs> Silverman, you know, just cause it, that's just fun. Um, I don't know. You know, I did a little movie. I, I just, we just watched it. I, I hadn't seen it in decades, decades. And um, yes, I said decades. You sure did. Um, it's called, um, it, it was called Fre uh, Freak Talks About Sex, but it's called, it, now I think they changed it to Blowing Smoke, but a uh, little tiny movie that I did up in upstate New York. Like it's, sometimes oh, cool. it's those I'm really proud of. Me and Josh Hamilton, amazing. Like like those little guys. Uh, jumping into why I get to talk to you. Um, do you guys feel a little bit like, were you having a little bit of deja vu or like a little weirdness when you're filming this movie in terms of, are we making like the next generation's Chris, like Christmas story? Because mm -hmm. like, there's a little, there's a lot of energy with that. I'm just comparing obviously the two movies. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I thought that the, you know, I thought it had a lot of that. It had a, it had a lot of, I mean, you know, it's kind of like a Western, right? You do a Christmas, a Christmas movie it's about Christmas. A Western is kind of a, a retold uh, fable, the American myth, basically. And it, so it, it's hard to deviate too much from, you know, other movies. But um, I think it's a it, it. God, I don't know what I'm saying. June, what do you think? You were basically you were shooting a Western while we were making this. See, I was in a different movie. So now all of your choices make sense to me, Steve. I was so confused and now I understand you were mentally in a Western. Um, I, I did, well, I, I read the script and I was like, oh, this is, it made me laugh, it made me cry. It was so, so nostalgic of, it is so similar to the way I grew up. The character reminded me so much of my mom. And yeah, it felt like, oh, it's got that thing. And sometimes that's hard to describe what that is, but that feeling of um, timelessness and, you know, something people are going to return to because the, the comedy is really strong, but then it hits, it hits in all the right places. So yes, when I read the script, I thought this is, this is, I think this is a Christmas classic for sure. One of the things that I think that's universal about this movie is that everybody, no matter who you are when you're a kid, there is a toy that you are desperate to get. Something yeah. that you, you know, you you would do anything to acquire. Um, and so for both of you, I'm sure you've answered this before, but what was that thing when you were a kid that you're like, I will literally cut off my arm. I need this. <laughs> I was really obsessed with the American. So I was the first generation of girls who had access to the American girl doll. And I think the book came out first and I like read the books crazily. And then I really wanted, and you could get you know, the American girls doll, girl dolls. Like they each were set in a different era of time. And I, looking back, I don't know if I should have done this, but I got Molly who was the like 1950s kind of tomboy doll. I really related to her and she wore glasses and um, she was really plucky and, and smart. And 
I just loved her and I love the stories about her and I was obsessed with her and I still have her. She's in my children's room. I mean, she's now like in a basket and her hair is in like one giant rat's nest, but she's still among us. And I worked on getting her for Christmas for a f- solid year. Um, and I got her. I think, uh, you know what I wanted? I just thought of this. I was trying to, uh, a Guns and Navarone mountain. Do you remember it? I'm aging myself, but there was a Guns and Navarone. It was a plastic mountain and it had an elevator and it had the German gun and it actually shot. What are you saying? It, it was a mountain? A yeah. It, you know, the Guns and Navarone, the movie, Gregory Peck. Okay. Anyways, movie and then they made the play set and you'd set up your set up your army men in it and i wanted that and i never got it thanks mom and dad wow what's funny is i think every kid oh sorry i was just wondering if steve still still wanted it and if i mean i I guess i could do a google search steve and see if i could get it for you you seem you seem really upset yeah it's pretty cool (laughs) my neighbor had it and I, i didn't Wow. Okay. Yeah. Did you, have you actually, um, actually, let me switch to something else. Last question for both of you. Uh, I'm a big fan of big mouth and I just have to ask you, uh, June, what's it like voicing Devin and Steve? Uh, did you notice a lot of people texting and calling you when white Lotus was on trying to get answers from you? Yes. Yeah. 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 I was uh, inundated with, um, yeah, people wanting to know who did what. Mm. Um, I never texted you, so I wasn't one of those people oh, harassing you. I, the, um, well, Big Mouth is just so amazing, and I, uh, I, I remember when I did the first episode of it, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna come in and do this one thing, and I'll, you know, Nick Nick Kroll is my a very old friend of mine. I love him so much, and and then the part and the character kind of kept on coming back, and I just I loved Devin. <laughs> And she's insane and it's, and the worst person in the world. And I love her dearly. You know, it's just so much fun. Yeah, I'm, I, I love the show. I think for anyone who's watching this interview has not seen Big Mouth, I strongly recommend it. It is, yeah. it, it's so good. Um, last thing, Steve, I know you're from Kentucky. I know you might be a fan of bourbon or whiskey. What's like the top bourbon or whiskey that you have to have? Like, what's the one you always reach for on the shelf? Well, like go to or or like if I can like Blanton's if I can find it or some Weller, you know. But like go to, man, that old old Forester eighty six, man. It's just cheap bourbon, but it's like good stuff. You're you're. I mean, I like bourbon and whiskey, and uh, you're based in Kentucky. Is it just as hard to get some of those bourbons and whiskeys now in Kentucky? Harder. I shot a movie in Montana and went to a liquor store and I couldn't believe it. And I brought two bottles. They had Weller and I brought two bottles. And I was like, can I get two? And the guy was like, do you live in Kentucky? I said, yeah, I do. He's like, I knew it. Like you can buy all of them if you want. And I was like, why well, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all set. Yeah. I got I got to stop there. I'm just going to say congrats on the movie and indulging my, uh, my questions. Um, have a great you. day. Thank you. you I thought you were going to pull out the Weller right now. 